Hello everyone. <coughs> this is Dr. Ammar Soni. Today I am sharing a case of 45.5 centimeter bone defect treated with ELISA method. Basically, I am a consultant orthopedic surgeon practicing limb reconstruction and ELISA work since last 23 years. I am practicing in Dahod, Gujarat. Now, these are a range of uh, entity which we treat at Soni Hospital. <clears throat> this video is purely for educational purpose for younger orthopedic surgeon. It is not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Seek advice of qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding this your medical conditions. This patient basically had vehicle accident, high velocity trauma. He had close fracture sharp femur right with ipsilateral commended, severely commended fracture middle third tibia. He had close tibia fracture on left side also. There are two schools of thought in treating such injury. One is to retain such fragment and do osteosynthesis and hope of that this fragment will unite. Applying LCP or ELISA frame in minimal invasive manner and at later date one may offer cancerous bone graft. If infection occurs in such situation, one need to revise the strategy, remove those loose pieces and uh, do the segment transport. Another strategy is to remove all loose avascular pieces without periosteal attachment on day one and segment transport with a lizard. Considering the magnitude of injuries, segment transport predictably heals this injury in reasonable time frame. He was treated initially for femur interlocked nail right side and tibia interlock on left side and on right tibia as a damage control debridement and conventional unipenal external fixator applied. As one can see here that the large bone piece was absolutely avascular and was removed without any difficulty. As patient had large gap and large row area, skin graft was done at one week and because of large gap, uh, to reduce time in frame, converging trifocal osteosynthesis was planned. This is how a prefabricated frame will look like uh, approximately a corticotomy will be done between first and second ring, and distally corticotomy will be done between third and fourth ring. Uh, with single corticotomy, if we do the transport, then patient will reach the stage of docking at around 150 days, means at around five months. If we do double corticotomy, patient will reach stage of docking at around 2.5 months. So this significantly saves initial period where a follow-up in a relatively short span is required. As consolidation time of regenerated bone segment is inversely proportional to its length, two shorter segments will consolidate more rapidly than one long segment. And this is the precisely the basis for opting for trifocal osteosynthesis. At six weeks, external fixator was removed, skin graft was held, and frame was applied. Proximal and distal corticotomy was done at the same stage. Translation at fracture site was addressed with bioplanar hinges and washer at later date. And here, foot frame was applied to prevent equinus. Both corticotomy uh, are done with freehand technique and adequate stability of proximal ring block is essential. And foot frame is also essential, otherwise patient will develop equinus. Destruction is to be started post latency of five days. So there are basically three phases of destruction osteogenesis. First one is latent, latency phase, second one is destruction phase, and third one is consolidation phase. These are few images while patient was in destruction. As one can see here that the gap at both destruction uh, sites is gradually increasing and at uh, gap side, gap is gradually decreasing. Here, the rate of destruction at both corticotomy is 0.25 mm four times a day, and compression rate is 0.5 mm four times a day. Destruction rods at both corticotomy are intensely kept little little longer only to ensure that patient comes in follow-up. Compression rods are changed to smaller one at each follow-up visit. During destruction phase, patient is instructed to come for follow-up at two to three weeks interval. Once this fragment reaches towards each other, the middle ring comes too near, and this is a common scenario, usual scenario with converging trifocal osteosynthesis. 
and in such situation making radiological assessment of union at docking site is very difficult besides this if we wish to do intermittent compression at docking site it would be difficult and at later date when we evaluate the union at docking site abnormal movement at docking site clinical testing is also a technically demanding procedure so in order to overcome this difficulty what we do is we reposition ring 2 and ring 3 so that there is an adequate space one can do radiological good radiological assessment and in event of <clears throat> intermittent compression we can have adequate space and at the time of clinical testing one can properly appreciate whether there is an abnormal moment or not docking is generally considered as the last procedure before frame removal so whenever you do docking, evaluate overall frame stability, do clinical testing of each half pins. If there is any loosening of wire of pin, do not hesitate in changing it. And the amount of compression which is given at the time of docking needs to be compensated by post-docking dissection in order to address limb line discrepancy. These are images four month post docking and 6.5 month post frame application one can see here that this good regenerate consolidation and <clears throat> docking site union is also in progress foot frame was removed at this point and docking site alignment is good clinical testing done and frame is dynamized in process of dynamism we reduce and neutralize the destruction and compression forces reduce the number of rods and remove all half pins gradually. At 9.5 month post frame application, patient had good regenerate consolidation, good docking uh, site union, and patient was full weight bearing with frame, and unaided walking was also there. So <clears throat> at 10 month, just these images just before frame removal, each rods between rings were removed and patient was in position to walk and there's no abnormal motion at both dissection site and docking site. And this is <clears throat> post frame removal, his uh, clinical and radiological picture. As one can see here, that there's reasonably good alignment. There's some residual bars and increase in TBL slope, but that is within acceptable range. This is his gate <clears throat> post frame removal. As one can see here, that this very next day post frame removal eventually. With some amount of physiotherapy, his gait will improve. Increase in tibial slope and mild ankle virus is not significantly clinically and will not adversely affect overall outcome. Overall healing index, patient had 306 days in frame for 14.5 cm gap. So 21.1 day per centimeter. Trifocal, <coughs> trifocal osteosynthesis significantly reduces time in frame. Fracture united without bone graft, without flap cover, and without shortening. Patient had minimal morbidity, and patient was ambulated during the whole course of treatment. Unaided walking and return to pre-injury occupation would be possible. And as frame was dynamized in due course, post-frame removal breast cast was not given. For any query, please contact me on following numbers or mail ID. Thank you. Thank you all.